Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are clipping, so hopefully this video is going to show you how to clip if you don't know how to already, and if you do know how to already, it will provide you with some light entertainment. <laughs> Camera's going already. I'm not the best at it, I just go at it with some gusto. I think the clippers can smell fear, so the most important thing is to just be confident and remember that the only difference between a bad clip and a good clip is about a week. So if you've got any important events coming up where your horse should probably look presentable, clip him at least like four days a week before, you'll be fine. McAllister's already had his first clip of the season and it was only done about three and a half, four weeks ago. I just find that the first clip always grows back really quickly. So he definitely needs doing again. We're going out hunting on Saturday, today's Wednesday. So I think if we clip him today, any little clip lines or any little spots that don't look so great should be nice and camouflaged by Saturday. So that is my main tip. Don't clip the day before if you're not very good at clipping. Give it a few days to kind of mellow out and um, hide any areas where you're not so talented at the clipping. As with many things in this life, the secret to getting a good finish is to put the effort in with the prep. So I've already had my blades sharpened and oiled and they're back on the clippers. I've gotten McAllister in from the field. I've given him a good brush and I'm just gonna go over him with some coat shine spray because it just helps the clipper blades glide over the skin and it just means that you don't have to get them sharpened as often because what you'll find is mud and dirty horses really dulls the blades quite quickly so we want to keep the blade sharp so we get a good result for as long as possible also i just want to sort of brag about how McAllister's looking isn't he looking well i think we are getting there with his muscle building he, i mean he is still ribby but he's certainly not underweight in fact he's overweight at the moment that big tummy He's certainly looking the best he's ever looked, that's for sure. As for me, not so sure. I'm in dirty clothes, like stained jumper. I couldn't even tell you if that's an old stain or a new stain. I just don't know. Clipping is a horrible, dirty job. I'm not going to wear my nicest, finest clothes to do it in. So this is what you've got me in. In an ideal world, you'd probably bath your horse the day before, but I'd rather just use some elbow grease, give the horse a really good brush, douse them in coat shine spray, and then once that's dry, give them another brush. You want the coat as clean as possible so that the clippers glide rather than drag. Just before I get started, if you don't know how to tension your clipper bit, blah, blah, blah. if you don't know how to tension your clipper blades, very simple, basically just do them up as tight as they will go. Twist it clockwise until you cannot twist it anymore. So the little dot is there. And then to get the correct tension for clipping, you undo it by one and a half turns. So turn it anti-clockwise for one and a half turns, which is about there. That's all you need to know. Every day's a school day. So whilst I'm clipping, I like to keep some clipper oil handy. This is a spray, which is so convenient, and a brush just to brush any hair off the horse whilst I'm going, and also to brush the clipper blades because they get all clogged up as well. And we want to just keep things clean and able to move freely. So brush, clipper oil, Let's go. Now, a little health and safety disclaimer. I would just like to say that clipping by yourself is certainly not recommended. It's much safer and much better to have two people when you're clipping. But McAllister is such a good boy. I'm absolutely fine to do it by myself. But if you have someone that can help you, I would always, always recommend you have two people to clip a horse. It's just good practice with every horse to start clipping from the shoulder let them get used to the clippers until you move to the more sensitive areas, such as under the tummy or around the legs. The blades can get quite hot when you're clipping, so it's good to just keep a damp cloth or sponge just to hold against the blades and cool them down. Obviously, you want to oil your blades every five to ten minutes anyway, and that will help stop them overheating. But also, if the clippers aren't cutting through hair, like if you have just a minute where you're assessing your clip job so far, switch the clippers off, because what I find is that when the blades are running, but they're not actually against the skin or the hair, that's when they tend to overheat the most. So if they're not cutting through hair, just switch them off. When you're clipping a horse, you want to go against the hair, so in the opposite direction of the hair growth. And you want to keep the skin taut, especially around the areas with excess skin. I find the shoulders and the flank are the most difficult areas for me to do. So just go slowly, go gently, 
Let the clippers do the work. You shouldn't have to press down hard against the skin. Just hold the clippers flat and let the weight of the clippers glide up against the hair rather than being forceful with them because that's when you're going to run into issues like cutting the horse's skin by accident. So McAllister's having a hunter clip, which means his legs are left on and a very badly shaped saddle patch. I also leave his face on because I hate clipping near their eyes and I clip to be functional, not to be aesthetically pleasing. Also, whilst we're in the midst of the hunting season, McAllister is hogged, which has made my life so much easier. So I'm just going over his mane as well with the clippers. Whilst I'm there, just saves another job. I think the most important thing is not to be nervous about clipping. I think we all put so much pressure on ourselves to do the most professional looking job, but really just have a go. It's, as I said before, it's a functional thing. It's to prevent your horse from overheating in the winter and getting all sweaty after they've worked and then standing around in a damp coat for hours, which is when they get ill. So clipping is for function, not to be pretty. So if you're not very good at it, don't worry. It certainly does take a few goes until you're comfortable and you're confident with your own management of clipping. I'd say definitely find your own method. I chop and change. Like sometimes I'll cut in all my lines first. I usually do that with the first clip of the season when I'm just trying to get everything as good as possible. But other times I start at the shoulder and then I'll move to the bum and then I'll do the tummy. It's a bit of a mismatch. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I just kind of go with what I feel. Luckily, today's a lovely, sunny, warm day. But if the weather is cold and if your horse especially feels the cold, if they're a thoroughbred type or a finer type, just try and keep a rug over the areas that you aren't currently clipping. And it will just keep them more comfortable and less fidgety because they won't be moving around trying to keep warm. After I finish clipping, I like to give the horse another really good brush and then just assess the job. See if I've missed any areas or if there's any runs in the clip lines anywhere that just need another little go over. And then I'll hot cloth with a mixture of really hot water, baby oil and a little dash of Dettol. And that's it. The clip is done. Don't stress about it. Just, just go for it. Just get involved. The worst you can do is a bad job and it's only hair it will grow back anyway. And the next time you go to clip, you'll be much more experienced and you'll just get better and better. So if it's not something that you're comfortable with doing by yourself, just get stuck in, give it a go. The worst you can be is wrong.